Um, but now we're going to talk about the zone of interest, which is um, Jonathan Glazer's new film. Uh, do you want to give it a bit of a summary for people? Yes. Um, so the zone of interest follows um, the commandant of Auschwitz, uh, Rudolf Hoss, and his wife, Hedwig, who live in a house attached to Auschwitz and their aims to build a, a lovely family life there. I haven't researched this um, before talking about it, so I'm, I'm going purely off of the film. Yeah. Um, I don't know how true to life it is. I know Rudolf Hoss was a, a real guy. Yeah. Um, and I know the things that he did uh, were very real. Mm. Um, but how attached his house was to Auschwitz, I don't know. No, I think it's... I don't know if they shot in the same house. I think they shot in the same area. Um, but the mm. the house looks exactly the same. I've seen like photos of wow. it. Yeah, the people who there's people who live there now. Like you think I don't know why you'd oh want to live God. there. Oh my God! But um, it looks exactly the same. Apart from there was like a modern TV. It wasn't modern. It was like a nineties one. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, no, I think it was a pretty accurate representation because yeah, you see, there's the big walls and you see the t- the roofs of some of the buildings of Auschwitz. Yeah. And, and you see, see like, some the chimneys, chimneys and the smokestacks. And... I think in real life, I remember there was a big tree in the garden that they deliberately put there so you couldn't see the chimneys. But maybe there was some small, maybe mm. that was just a big near one that you could still see the other ones. Because at night in the film, like the orange light from the flames from yeah. that, like illuminates the whole house really through the curtains. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did know a bit about it beforehand. I knew about Rudolf Hoss. I knew how he... I, I thought that it would show, um, like, how... The end of the war, basically. Like, how, mm. um, how, how that happened when, when the camp was liberated and how Rudolf Hoss died. Um, I knew that going into it. I kind of thought that would be covered in it. Um, do you want me to just tell hanged, you? He got hanged, didn't he? He, he got, got hanged, hanged yeah. Is that right? But it was... Um, so, so, basically, when everything was going bad for the Germans, they kind of knew they, they'd lost. And so... Um, I think it was Himmler. It was one of the like top German people told him like disguise yourself as a regular German soldier as like um as like a, a gardener in for the army. Mm. And so he disguised himself as a gardener, but I think they were still like they they knew he was in this area so they were sort of interrogating everyone. I think he looked a bit like him. And they saw he was wearing a a wedding ring and they made him take the wedding ring off and he was like no I don't want to and he, they did and it said like Hoss on the inside so they knew that that was what him. a twat but yeah he, so he got found out slightly later oh that's how they found out who I was because they had they because the fam, his family I think still lived in Auschwitz or at least they lived they knew where they were and yeah. they tortured his son and so Hedwig his wife gave up where he was oh and so God. they were like and so they that's how I found him and then Obviously, Nuremberg trials, and he was hanged. Yeah. So I kind of thought that would be in the movie because, mm. like, obviously that's such a big part of the story. But I guess at the same time, it's like it's not a biopic about Rudolf Hoss and his family. Yeah. It's that's not the point. So I kind of get why it wasn't. Yeah. But I did think maybe the the part for me that was a bit like I I'm not sure about this is it the story it just kind of stopped. Like I'm not really sure why the film ended there. So so yeah, I was going to say that actually. So um. Not knowing about him, and it kind of ends with the implication that he has a form of cancer or something. Um, with him coughing. So oh, I was is like, that oh, what you? So th- oh, okay. That's I, not at all I how I like, interpreted it. I was like, oh, so so is it implying that he doesn't get justice, that he dies of cancer, and and doesn't face justice from for for him what he did? But then, yeah, he got hanged. So I'm I'm not entirely sure why that, that he was... goes to the doctors and gets felt kind of around the bowels, and he coughs up. I don't know if he coughs up blood or, like, violently coughs the last time you see him. Oh, so my interpretation of that, which is totally different, and I think I might be mm. wrong, I thought that was just meant to show... Because he's, like, gagging as well. He's, like, almost like he's sick. Yeah. I thought that was, like, him having this, like, feeling so awful and, like, gagging and, and feeling disgusted was him having some humanity left in him and realising that what he's doing is is gross. And then the ending of the movie, when he like he's, like, almost sick after being in that meeting when they're talking about like mm. how they're going to like make the Holocaust, like expand it yeah. to like get everyone. Like um, he, he's almost sick and then he pulls himself together and walks and carries on walking down like into a dark corridor into the shadows. And that's the end. So I think I interpreted that as he was that like... That makes a lot more sense. As he was like, it shows, yeah. oh, all these people in this meeting, they go off separate ways. They have humanity. They all kind of think like, 
is this mm. is this wrong? Is this really actually a horrible thing I'm doing? And then they all like, no, pull myself together. This is what we're doing. Yeah. This is what we're, we're told is the right thing. This is what's got security of my family. I'm just going to do yeah. it. And so that's how I interpreted it. No, that that makes a lot more sense. That like, especially how he walks down into the darkness. Yeah. So for those who who haven't seen the film, um, please go and watch it. It's it's so important. It's such a an interesting but very hard watch. Yeah. One of the things that has made this this film kind of as well received. It's not just like something like the boy in the striped pajamas. So mm. I know we mentioned last week that we were going to do. Um, a double feature yeah, between this and the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah. So I watched the boy in striped pajamas before this, and I really didn't like it. Yeah, I, I would like to talk was... about it because yeah, people have very strong views on it. Yes. So I thought it was very manipulative, and I thought it was uh, very cheap in what it did. Uh, this is the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah, yeah. I understand that you need to enter a story with a surrogate for the audience, and it makes sense that. If you have a child moving to a new place whose dad is the commandant, you have to learn about Nazi Germany and have to learn about the well, camp yeah. and learn about the Jewish people. But as an audience, you don't need to be told that Nazis are bad. You don't need characters saying, well, I disagree with you. You don't need a, a, a Nazi soldier go, oh, well, those Jews smell even worse when they're burning. Yeah, like, that You was... don't need to say that. You, you as an audience, well, as yeah, a human being, value, you know yeah. that's bad. You don't need to be told that. Um, and I thought it was very lazy. But in the zone of interest, you're not given that at all. Yeah. As there is there is one character, um, which is the mum. She says a lot of has similar any, things to that, though. Yeah, any disagreement, but the rest of them just get on with it. Like, yeah. Hedwig is, is more involved in making this house lovely and building a family. Yeah. Hoss is about serving the Fuhrer. Yeah. Um, and as an audience, you don't need to be told how horrible it is. Yeah, That's well, not Ho- the point. Hoss never, he never seems like a villain, really. He, he just comes no, across as a normal man just, doing his people, job. Aren't they? And I think that's kind of what that's is scary. so horrifying. Yeah, it is, yeah. is we just know what's happening and we can hear in the distance. Yeah. Um, you don't need Professor Lupin to act like a twat or to yeah. beat his kids or whatever. But you I, don't need that. I, I, I would like to talk about Boy and Strap Jumps a little bit because we did that in, we studied it in school. And so we watched the film after we read the book. And I do think there are there are things it does well. I, I think I think the way it, it handles Nazis... I, th- I think the film is, is interesting about the attitudes of Nazis. I think as a portrayal of the Holocaust, it's it's not su- not successful. And it's not mm. historically accurate and, you yeah. know, all that. Um, but I think in the way of showing how normal people can do commit horrible acts and how even like you know the mum character in that is against it but how she still yeah. doesn't fight against it she just is complacent and just lets it happen i so i think as a sort of way of watching that and learning how a normal person can do with these awful things and i think sort of humanizing them i think is good because i think if you do just take the attitude of like nazis are one-dimensionally evil then you're just going to be... If someone calls you out for like doing or saying bad things, you'll just be like... and Say you're like a Nazi. You, you, you would just be like, well, no, I'm not, because they're one-dimensionally evil. That's not me. I know I'm not like that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you can see what makes them act like that, I think that's a very yeah. interesting and important thing to know. Uh, yes. I think the film could have handled it better, but I think I think they're, that part of it, I think, is important. Uh, and it's an interesting thing that they, mm-hmm. in ways, do well, in other ways, not so much. Um, but they do it a very different attitude here. They show, um, yeah, human. Uh, the Nazis are normal people, as it were, uh, who do this awful stuff. They 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 sort of show that same sort of thing in, in a different way. I thought the most interesting character in this was Hedwig, was the wife. Yeah, because you know what Hoss is about. You know why he does what he does. You yeah. know that he is a despicable, disgusting man. But his wife is just as aware and is just as exploitative. Like the first time well, you she... see her, she has like armfuls of clothes from like baby grows prisoners. Yeah. She and they're like, the oh, pick one each. That was um, so horrible. Yeah. Really bad. And, and she is there for personal gain. Yeah. Um, and out of ignorance. Well, You've she's like kids profiting well. from it. Yeah. And she's talking yeah. about at yeah. one point with her friends about, um, there was some, uh, auction or something for for someone who was sent to the, the Holocaust. Curtains. Who was yeah yeah. And she's like, oh, I want it then. Yeah. Like, and it's yeah. it's completely trivializing the whole yeah. thing. I, I mean, I, they they use the um. There are very few Jewish characters in this film. Yeah, and the Jewish characters you see are from local villages. I think. I think that's what they say. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. 
They don't go to Auschwitz. There's two they're, girls. They're local people. There's two girls who work at the house. Yeah. And there's like, you see the odd like man. And, and you see like, a guard as well. Of, yeah. Uh, but I don't even know if they have any lines, do they? Mm, I don't remember no, them ever I don't talking. Think so. Yeah. Yeah, this gardener is using ashes from the yeah. factory to like fertilize the plants. Because there's a really horrible scene That's... where he, where he's like doing all that. And you can hear a lot of like commotion in the camp in the background. It's really, yeah. and he's right next to the wall as well. Yeah. And it's just a, a really big contrast. I mean, also you see a couple of the sons in like a in bunk bed in, in bed. They're like got some gold teeth. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I do think the the me, the bit of the movie I think that I was most like deflated was when they're yeah she's putting the clothes. I think I thought they were like baby grows, but maybe they're just like children's clothes. She's putting on the table near mm. the start, and as they also as they have like her baby there, and he's like so loving, yeah. like that contrast just crying of, like, the whole time. You, this baby, yeah, you never see it not crying. But you know that this. You know they they're treating this this baby so well. And then another baby, which has obviously done nothing wrong, they're like yeah. murdering and stealing the clothes from, and just how that is nothing wrong with that to them. Yeah, is so yeah, yeah, yeah. so shocking. I do think the most shocking parts of the movie, like almost like a horror film, is like the first half an hour, forty five minutes, where it is just that sort of slice of life, mm. sort of heaven versus hell stuff. One of the big things that leans into that, let's talk about the, the sound design and the score, yeah. uh, which very much go hand in hand in this. I think the score's fantastic. but I, The score I, is, is great. But most of the movie is unscored. It's only really the odd little moment. And it's like start 15 minutes worth. Yeah, so the way I read into the score was they, they come in, if you've seen Under the Skin, it's, it's used very similarly. Yeah, so they it's are same like composer, bursts I believe, right? of, of sound. And for me, it was almost like a reminder that you're not watching a documentary. Yeah. Um, because it's presented in such a fly on the wall manner that it, it could almost be you're just watching edited together footage from a family home. Yeah. But this this blaring score to connect sequences really keeps that tone going. Not that you need anything to add to this this horror feel, but it, it kind of just ties it all together um, as as well as the sound design. Yeah, I thought what was so like interesting was it. It starts with like a, a long overture before yeah, any of the visuals come just in. Nothing. It's just just black screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, which under the skin kind of has an overture where you're seeing like her eye and you're seeing her like I guess mm. getting like made, uh, and that's got a lot of music and it's just there to set the tone before we start. Yeah. But this, yeah, there's there's no visuals at all. It's just nothing. you're just sitting in silence listening to Michael Levi's really like haunting score. Yeah. And then it fades in with birds chirping, I think, when they're they're playing at the river together. Yeah, the first shot is the yeah. one. I think it was the first picture they like released about this film. Mm. So them sitting by the like riverside. Yeah. So what did you think about the sound design in this? Oh, it was horrible. I mean, going into so, it, I, I heard so that it, it was going to be. I thought it'd be like distorted mm. and more horror-y. And actually, I think it's so. What is? And I thought it'd be like in moments. But I think what was mm. so so effective is the entire movie. Any single time they're in the garden, or even kind of in the house, you can still kind of hear it. Is there's gunshots from every so often? There's a bit of screaming. There's dogs yeah. barking. There is like just sounds of it, it, the sounds of hell, basically. Very industrial, yeah. And it's never addressed. Like the characters yeah. having normal conversations, fun, happy family times, never ever addressed that this is going on behind the walls, and you yeah. can always hear it in the distance. And it feels really real. I really hope it wins best sound. Um, I think so. It's I think it might well deserving. Very hard to listen to. Even even when you've got um, there are kind of the odd shots of of the the youngest son like playing with his drum or with his. But soldiers. there was a bit, yeah. He looks out the window because it, yeah, at the sound, yeah. And and he says like, "Don't do that" or something. Yeah, and then he just goes oh, straight back to God. playing. I think yeah, a big theme of this movie though sort of it seemed like it is like heaven versus hell basically, like the mm. two of them next to each other, but it's as if the sort of yeah. the injustice of they're in the wrong places. Yeah, yeah. You, the, the garden is um, all these beautiful flowers, and and she. There's an extended sequence where Very Hedwig's big. going like talking uh, about every single teeth. one. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the end, when when well, not that near the end, but when when Rudolph is um, made to go work in Berlin. Yeah, Hedwig really wants to stay there. You think you think the family yeah. would really not want to be anywhere there? They'd be forced to live there, but they would want to live anywhere else. But no, she she's so proud of her garden. She so loves her house. She yeah. loves the, the, what the family have there, and I, she she's, obviously loves yeah. exploiting the labour. Um, she's proud that they they call her the Queen of Auschwitz. Yeah, the thing I I thought was very interesting. I, I wanted to hear your opinion on um, the use of fading to block colour in this. I only remember that once. So it fades to red. There's a blue bit as well okay. face to blue at one point I don't remember that 
very black at the start. I think it fades yeah, to well, white. Black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. It almost just feels very overwhelming. Because mm. it's um, sort of that. Because uh, also the score builds and the sort of the sound yeah. goes away, and the scene just blends from yeah normal scene into like just hell again, like just really horribleness. Mm. And how about the the negative color? It, it was like night. Night yeah, I don't know what vision. it was. It, it almost looked like yeah, night vision or like a um. It looked like a film, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, it did. But then at the same time, like the sky, I kind of assumed that was taking place mm. at night, and the sky was black. Maybe it was in the day, and it was so that was that was a bright sky. That was really interesting. Talking about your your kind of heaven and hell theme. Yeah, that the house they live in is is very white. It's very clean. It's very idyllic. Mm. And the only moment of like positivity or almost levity you get in this are from these almost negative film. Yeah. thermo imaging scenes um from i don't know if it was I don't, one I didn't, of the housemaids from the the town yeah see i, I, I didn't understand those bits i i feel like they've got a, a lot of symbolism but i never got them yes um but so it, i i read into it as it's it's one of the people working at the house who is stealing food and i think there are two sequences where one she's putting them into like mud yeah in a, along a line no workers would go out and and start digging trenches yeah. or something and then that's that's something that's gonna it's the tiniest bit of food but it's gonna help yeah. people survive just that bit longer give them a better chance when they go him and his son go like horse riding out like yeah and they do come across a pile of apples on the floor and there's also later on there's some dialogue talking about how some men were fighting over an apple oh yeah 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 and um and then the second yeah. time they do that like like night vision black and white thing there he's reading the story of hansel and gretel to his children mm. this bedtime story and it's sort of as she's leaving yeah. the trail yeah i wasn't I... really sure what that i didn't know if it was like a metaphor if it was literal or i also thought it would have like th- i thought it would have a th- like a, another bit I- i'm surprised that when mm. when we never saw that again because you... he sees her going into a it's... house but is that yes, their the house? second time you see it yeah is is her leaving this trail um behind shovels and things mm. uh, and she finds a, a little metal tin with sheet music in yeah and she rides back all in the pitch black to her home and then she plays it on the piano and then it cuts back to the hoss house yeah and like that's the only time you see anything but his family home anything but the nazis yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that like small glimmer of of hope or or humanity direction and the very interesting use of of camera in this yeah so for those who who aren't aware the technique used for this were were multicam over you watch it through and they're like long scenes played throughout they they walk through the house into different rooms and it's almost like obviously there are cuts between cameras but mm. it's one flowing movement like it's not we shoot in this room cut reset yeah, up yeah, in this yeah. there's room. a lot of like it's on tracks and it's yes and here. and it's because um i don't know if you read about this that they set up almost hidden cameras in the house yeah set them up very wide shots let them run and cleared the house of crew so it almost has this uh improvisational yeah. feel to let i the heard characters... sandra huller say when when they're filming in the garden like she didn't know where the cameras were mm. but i guess that's quite good for that's... actors like they're just yeah. just acting no like um, oh we need to make sure i'm being seen from this angle and none of that which is what what a unique way of filming this like to get that real yeah. almost big brother fly on the wall it's vibe, like a uh, yeah like a god view of it all yeah, we're just watching. We can't because most films we're sort of there's a, a main character where we as the audience are supposed to put ourselves in them. Yeah, they're like an audience surrogate, or they're even if they're different yeah. to us, we're supposed to relate to them. We're supposed to live their life through them. Uh, yeah. This isn't like that at all. This is all wide shots. We're just watching. We're not supposed You're to exactly relate to. Right. We're not supposed to think yeah. as if we are Hedwig or 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 Rudolf Haas. Like yeah. we are just watching them. It has. It's. It reminded me of. Um, have you seen Red Rocket? Yes. So big controversy around Red Rocket is he is presented in a way. Uh, it's it's like neo realism. Mm. Um, he goes on about his life and starts a relationship with an underage girl. Yeah. But it's not explicitly condemned by any characters in the film. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. You need you need to as an audience member understand that that is a horrible thing. Yeah. He's al- only really guy, shown positively. Yes. Although he is he's like a a bubbly guy. Yeah. Um, who who seems like someone you'd want to spend time with? Yeah. He's he's a, a, a paedophile. It so seems yeah. It seems you, you like almost like a romance, but it's not. You're yes, supposed it's not to, at all. Yeah, yeah. But you're supposed to be like, no, um, you shouldn't be around this guy. And it's very similar to this, where it's it's shot in a very unopinionated way. Yeah. Um, there aren't any hero shots. 
you don't get any interest in like tracking it doesn't lead you to believe anything it's here is a wide shot of everything happening yeah. take away from it what you want spend this time in their house and you can see yeah it, it's like going i'm to not it. gonna i'm not gonna put any bias into this you, like take I mean, away from it what you need to take away like, from yeah it. it's like visiting auschwitz as a museum but not reading any of the um uh, yeah. information boards you can yeah. you, just watching what's happening and it's really brilliant because it's all wide shots you never see a character close at all apart from no i th- i know there's one shot which is pretty big close up which is the only time the camera is like inside auschwitz was it two is it the lo- the low angle the low angle pass. yeah and you just see his yeah. his face and you hear around you yeah know, and the smoke behind him the smoke behind him and yeah you yeah. can hear that he's in auschwitz um yeah people being shot all around him and yeah. his face is blank that's like the only time you see him at work um the whole rest of the time is all wide shots mm. and it's all in the gut there's some bits in berlin but it's all like outside still the camp. wide yeah yeah all still wide shots let's talk about so we've, we've mentioned the ending um let's talk about the flash forwards so oh yeah ha- have you been to auschwitz no i went a couple of years ago uh, with a couple of friends stayed in krakow and it's such a lovely place krakow i would recommend going really gorgeous uh, and we went to auschwitz went to birkenau and it was one of the most harrowing experiences yeah. um i've i've spoken about it before i don't know if i've spoken to you about it but whenever i talk about auschwitz i talk about the last rooms you go in mm. which are like sectioned off cubby holes covered with glass and behind them are piles of shoes yeah, and piles yeah, yeah. of bags and seeing that in this film again really hard mm. i'm i'm shocked that they didn't show the one that got me it, it's it's so hard walking around but i really got caught out is at that, the end when you see this just piles and piles of hair. hair i thought it'd be the hair um it's possible oh. that they weren't allowed to show that because it's like actual like dead yeah body stuff um, I thought it'd be that because I've seen photos of of all of this—the really, shoe, the pile of really shoes, the pile hard. of hair, all this. Yeah, it is horrible. And seeing it now, I think, especially intercut with as I think your interpretation is is bang on. Now, I think it's it makes so much sense. Mm. Him having that moment of reflection and and seeing how it would be now. The only time you see in Auschwitz is I think it was like the first furnace you go into. You see the piles of shoes. You see just people going about their day to day life. Yeah. In a very different context to people going about their day to day life in, uh, in Yeah, the film. you just see cleaners just hoovering, yeah. wiping. Again, it's it's unbiased. Yeah. It gives no opinion. It is the these are people working in Auschwitz today compared to people working in Auschwitz years and years and years ago. Yeah. But yeah, old boy was that hard to see again. I'd like to go. I've seen a lot of documentaries and films on it, so I feel like I education wise i might not learn stuff but i think it's a very important thing to very very see. important yeah because that's kind of i guess the negative of the film is that uh, in terms of films like this need to be made to educate people and i feel like i didn't mm. learn any new stuff at all i feel like i kind of already knew it it does remind you and it makes you feel stuff i don't know if it's all i did think for a second like is this almost exploitative to um take this and make effectively like a horror film out of it and just mm. be like, we're going to make you just feel as unsettled as possible. And rather than just saying, because it's a very different approach to, you know, the, the film Shoah. Um, I've not seen it. I think it's it's like, it's basically known for being the longest film of all time. I think it's like 17 hours. Wow. It's just a Holocaust documentary. Um, I watched like the first hour and it's so, so slow. It's like he was just yeah. walking from A to B for like 10 minutes. It's like, well, you can just cut this. He's not saying anything. But, um, yeah. but it is... The director of that like hates Schindler's List because he said it was like exploitative to, um, because sh- thing of show it doesn't show any footage from it or any photos. You, they just, you just talk about it, and so that attitude is like you shouldn't be recreating it. You shouldn't be trying to make the audience cry at seeing and hearing horrible stuff. You should just tell people this is what happened. This is why we can never ha- let it happen again. So I don't know. There was kind of times where I was, I was, I thought I don't think it was wrong, but I I was thinking like I don't think so. Is I this, think. The, exploiting it i think the boy in the striped pajama is is more, more exploitative, exploitative than this you don't you don't need to see people well that's the thing through. they like you don't that's not the point of the film see as a kid obviously that was really i mean people were crying and stuff when we watched that in middle school um like the ending scene in the gas chamber but i do kind of yeah i i agree like you don't need to see it yeah i mean i get that it, it does it does people might before be like yeah whatever like i, I know that's horrible but i don't mm. need to think about it this is like showing it really digs yeah. down like no this is a serious thing so you you're not telling rudolph hoss's story 
because it's not about him no. and it's not about his wife and it's not about his family. You are almost going from a a perspective to explore what happened. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I, just, I, I thought it was it was very good. I didn't... I think I maybe knew so much about the topic already that I uh, didn't learn anything. And so I watched it with my friend Dan and he didn't really like it very much because he, I think, was expecting more of a conventional film and then... Mm came out oh, of we it. had people walk out of the screen in really because with yeah. it was very strange for me because when we went to see it most people almost were on their own yeah so when it finished like dan was like oh i did i was a bit rubbish and everyone else clearly was like wow. in stunned silent but clearly like loved it yeah yeah and i sort of said to him like yeah but it's not it's not about entertainment this film it's just there to be like thought provoking yeah and he's like yeah but it didn't provoke any thoughts i already knew about yeah. the holocaust Go and watch Argyle, if you want to. But he did say, like, so what thoughts is it supposed to to provoke? And I was kind of thinking, like, I I suppose it isn't making me think anything new that I haven't thought much stronger in other films. Schindler's List makes me think about the Holocaust in so much more, and it educates about... So this is what, like, the ghetto is like. This is, like, when they evacuated everyone from, like, like, Krakow and, like... um, this is when they, this is what Auschwitz is like. This is what Schindler's Factory is. Yeah. You learn all these different things yeah. about it. It's very, very educational, and also that you learn the different historical figures and everything. And and you get the horrible. This is a disgusting thing. Mm. These are so yeah. I don't feel like I learned too much from this, or felt things I hadn't thought before. I mean, apart from the first <sighs> half an hour when it's like just fly on the wall. For me, I would argue that that's the point. That yeah, you, you don't have a surrogate. You don't have a Schindler. Yeah, you don't have anyone as an audience you feel alien but i don't think it's even like, that. you feel it's just you feel awkward you feel misplaced you feel yeah. like you shouldn't be there and you feel uncomfortable the whole time whether consciously or subconsciously something mm. feels off it's very similar to under the skin something just feels weird and arguably a good documentary like a louis three documentary you still you use louis as as a surrogate to yeah. view these stories but this is almost the wrong combination of film and documentary. You you are purposefully making it hard for an audience to relate to what's yeah. going on. And that's that's kind of the point. That's why it worked so well, is that I never felt like I could experience the film. I could enjoy the film as entertainment. Yeah. Not like Schindler's List, because you can get a form of entertainment out of it, because you're rooting for characters and, and you want Schindler and, and to win. And they've got the ending, which is like, obviously... I guess bittersweet, but it's yeah. Ultimately, these people survived who wouldn't have otherwise survived, and so yes. you're partly crying because yeah, yeah, yeah. partly crying because obviously so many people die, but you're also like these people survived and they've got generations because of them. Yeah. So for me, I, I would say that's that's a positive that I took away from it. But I understand yeah. that maybe that's not what people go to the cinema for. Or um... no, I, I, I yeah, I thought it was very positive. I think it's just I've seen other films that. Yeah have made me feel the same thing so it didn't provoke many new thoughts i think also i just i just mm. knew about knew about rudolph house i knew about his house a bit. yeah um but if you don't i can yeah it's a, it is a really good film well there you go that was zone of interest yeah that was a very um a very mature i uh, think so for us discussion i think uh, i think we looked at cinematically very looked at that a lot which mm. is good what's um, it nominated for i think it's um uh, best picture best director mm. best picture it best international I, uh yeah Best Picture, I don't think it will win. I think Oppenheimer will. No. Best Director. Best Picture, possibly. Best International, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best, best in- Sound. It will definitely win International because it's the only one nominated for Picture. Um, and best Sound, sound easily it, winning that. I think it should win that. At least. I think it probably will. I would recommend I, you see I would it. recommend it. Five stars I gave it. Yeah. I gave it... F- one of the best of this year. I gave it year. four because I think I kind of wanted more from it. I thought when it stopped, I was like, I am actually in the mood to see more of this movie. Not satisfying, isn't it? The whole film was unsatisfying. 